As the world still processes the sting of the Will Smith slap, a curious explanation has emerged that this was about race. That a black man striking another black man, who had made an offensive joke about a black woman, cannot be separated from a country where race and racism runs deep. In this telling, the actor was primed for this moment of madness. That Smith was not just responding to an offensive joke about his wife, but acting out generations of racially informed trauma. Well before the Academy Awards, Smith had written and spoken about his own childhood experience of violence, seeing his father beat his mother. There are suggestions Chris Rock's offensive joke about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, triggered childhood trauma and feelings of helplessness. And he hit out. Was Will Smith acting out generations of racially informed trauma? But this is more than childhood trauma. According to some this is intergenerational. Violence is unacceptable anywhere, anytime. Those who believe that violence begets violence overlook the lesson of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who led a civil rights movement in the United States inspired by the idea of nonviolence. In the face of violence, Dr. King urged his followers to turn the other cheek. Dr. King believed that a cycle of violence can be broken. Was Smith striking out against a history of racism? But the Academy Awards slap has reignited a vigorous conversation, particularly amongst black Americans and here too in Australia, amongst indigenous people, that Smith was striking out against a history of racism and brutalization of black people, particularly women. That Rock is also black only complicates the matter. The comedian, it is said, has internalized racism that makes it okay to mock the appearance of black women. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech in 1963 was part of a civil rights movement based on nonviolence. In this telling, history put Rock and Smith on that stage. Clearly Smith and Rock are fabulously wealthy, privileged and famous black people but that doesn't mean they cannot also be scarred by racism. The argument goes that both men are shaped by trauma. That they are tied to history. History lives in the oppressed and it has a lie hold. Can trauma be genetically inherited? Science has a role here. Studies into the offspring of prisoners of war, or those who have lived through famine or imprisonment, the colonized and enslaved, claim to reveal a higher likelihood of fatal diseases like cancer or greater prevalence of mental illness. Simply, history s. According to this theory, ancestral trauma lives in us still. It is passed on in mother's milk. It becomes written in our genes. There is a scientific name for it, transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. Studies in rats appear to support the idea but similar studies in humans are too premature to be convincing. Many geneticists say claims of inherited trauma are implausible. Professor of Genetics and Neurology, Kevin Mitchell, quoted in the New York Times, says these extraordinary claims are being advanced on less than ordinary evidence. So is intergenerational trauma real? Trauma is a word widely used today, but it is also misunderstood and some psychiatrists argue just as widely misdiagnosed. Trauma is a modern invention. What we now know as post-traumatic stress disorder first appeared in the 1980s. It arose out of study into the survivors of war, particularly the Vietnam War. War-related trauma was evident in the shell shock of World War I veterans. In his book, The End of Trauma, psychologist George Bonanno says, the concept of psychological trauma seems to be a surprisingly modern idea. Bonanno looks to literature, pointing out that Homer's bloody accounts of the Trojan Wars make no allusion to trauma. Grief yes, he says, but not trauma. We are resilient. The first medical use of the term, Bonanno says, appears in the late 19th century. While our modern age can appear overwhelmed by trauma, Bonanno studies reveal we are in fact more resilient than traumatized. He says that people showing resilience tend not to search for meaning after potential trauma, but rather to focus on problem solving. But there is what he calls a resilience paradox. We can know the characteristics of resilience, but we can't predict resilient outcomes with much accuracy.
psychologist Dr. Tracy Westerman has carried out compelling research into inherited trauma. Bonanno also points out that demography plays a big part. Resilience is more common in older people and those who have greater resources and wealth. Again, this raises questions about oppressed communities, those who have inherited their trauma. While the science of epigenetics is disputed it can't be entirely dismissed. In Australia, Nyama woman and psychologist, Dr. Tracy Westerman, has done compelling studies into First Nations trauma and its influence on high rates of suicide. Drive Westerman says trauma is political. And the denial of trauma, political powerlessness, and a silencing of the past contribute to traumatic outcomes. As she has written, epigenetics tells us that racism impacts on Aboriginal people in the same way as a traumatic event. I have a personal story. Permit me a personal observation. Some years ago, I was diagnosed and treated for post-traumatic stress disorder after many years of covering war and suffering around the world. I am not alone, it is common in journalists dealing with extraordinary levels of stress. Yet I also felt my travails were linked deeply with my family's history as Aboriginal people in Australia. Covering war triggered memories and also resonated with the stories passed down in my family of suffering, hardship and violence. History is narrated. The stories we tell ourselves can often define us. I did not personally experience the suffering of my ancestors, but in a very real sense, I felt it. A map showing the location of 300 sites of the of indigenous people before 1930. We know this as collective memory. But that too is an invention, first coined by sociologist Maurice Halbwox. Individual memories, he argued, were understood within the context of a group. History is tied to memory. But memory is unreliable. And history is selective. As French historian and philosopher Michel de Certo said, we arrange the artifacts of our past like ornaments in a shop front window, curated to tell a story of ourselves. Collective memory can be changed. We can re-narrate our past. And we don't inherit the past similarly or equally. My children are indigenous, yet their experience of the world is different to mine, as mine is different to my parents. I shudder to think they are chained to their history, let alone that they are genetically determined by it. We need truth and justice. Great Irish writer James Joyce famously said history is a nightmare from which we are trying to awake. Nevertheless we can awake from it. But it requires truth and justice. None of this excuses will Smith's violence. He should be charged with assault, not celebrated. However, the slap heard around the world has triggered important discussion. The science of inherited trauma continues to be debated. Collective memory while powerful need not be destiny. Yet, this past week and our reactions to it remind us that so much of how see the world is in the telling. The Will Smith slap is a Rorschach test, we see different things in it. Racism and history. There are those who would see this as fanciful yet for others it is very real. It reminds me of the words of James Baldwin. I have been to a place which the Western world pretends has not happened. Stan Grant is the ABC's international affairs analyst and presents China Tonight on Monday at 9.35 p.m. on ABC TV and Tuesday at 8 p.m. on the ABC News Channel.